Welcome back to the bubble, ladies and gentlemen, and another replay commentary on Cossacks 3. This was a very fun game that I played together with two of the newest members to our Discord channel, more specifically, Mar Commander and Skew. So I'm uh, very happy about people joining the Discord, of course, and also active uh, people who want to play with us. That's always a lot of fun. But without any further ado, let's just go into the settings and the teams. It's a 3 versus 3 with no capture and no artillery. And also, we have only 10 minutes of peacetime compared to the regular 15 that I'm kind of more used to. But we have 5k starting resources and rich mineral settings. So now we can start going through the players. Starting off with me in the bottom right, playing as Piedmont in red. And then we have Mar Commander in blue, playing as Hungary. And in the very top, we have Skew, playing as England. So we are kind of spread out on the map. So let's see where our opponents are actually starting. Hmm, a diagonal line. Interesting stuff. I don't know which one I would prefer, actually. Because those two... All of us can be teamed out, basically. Any one of us can, except maybe Fred. But okay. Uh, starting off with purple down here, really vulnerable position. That is Sever playing as Netherlands in purple. Then we can go to brown next. Hungary and led by Demas. And last but not least in yellow in the top right, we have Fred playing as Switzerland. Without any further ado, let's just get into it. And this is a lot of fun as well because uh, Mark Commander and Skew are not very experienced players. Which is always fun, because this game has been around for so long. So that's why I find it's very interesting to also have new players who like played it when they were younger, and then rekindles their love for the game, so to speak. Always very happy about that. I'm starting very, very basically. Just getting the storehouse up, and also getting the uh, first town hall. And now, because we only have 10 minutes of peacetime, I don't really know how the build order should differ here compared to if uh, there was a 15 minute peace time so if you have any recommendations on that please let me know some might for example rather want to go for barracks earlier instead of the third town halls maybe but i'm just doing the same thing that i always do trade my iron and my coal so i can get more wood and stone so i can get the next town hall which i should start queuing up now so I'm just doing my basic stuff. Let's move over to my teammate, starting at Mark Commander. He went with the two barracks instead of the third um, three town halls. He hasn't gotten a marketplace up and running yet, have you? Okay, and that is uh, a first good tip to have, that uh, as soon as possible, you want to get the storehouse and the mill up so you can get a market and start trading for the third town hall so you can get as, as good of an economy as possible. But maybe this strategy is more suitable for 10 minutes peacetime because you want troops up as fast as possible. He's also starting to make some pikemen. I think those are uh, usually very popular to make, but we were talking in the Discord, all three of us, throughout this game. So I think now that he's going to switch and move into the high dukes instead. Because when there is no capture on and no artillery, then the meta is just getting a whole bunch of ranged troops and then putting those formations on top of each other. But all in all, I would say he's doing a great job so far. He's found two of his gold mines. You, of course, want to go to find all four of them as soon as just humanly possible. And also, it's also good with one iron mine. If you start trading away your iron and coal, then you need the iron to uh, sustain your unit production. Let's go up to Skew and see how he's doing. Playing as England. Did I say England? I hope I did. But at least his place as uh, England. A lot of people on food. Maybe not the best storehouse. He could destroy this storehouse and then put it down on the southern side of the stone excavation point. And usually, you don't want to start going for wood until you've gotten the wood cutting upgrade in the academy. That's why it's so important to get that one really, really quick. But he has two barracks already. I also have that, fortunately. But two barracks already. Also started making pikemen right away. He might switch into musketeers as well. Mark Commander is still going with the pikemen. I mean, with 10 minutes peacetime, only 5 minutes left. And the thing is, you might not be able to mass up enough musketeers to actually deal with pikemen. Because the pikemen are trained quicker 
4.5 compared to, oh, High Dukes are actually trained uh, really fast, so that works. They train at the same time, but also they don't require any coal or iron to shoot, etc. And they also have a lot of armor. So if you can max them up and then just rush. I started scouting on Sever, who is right between me and Mark Commander. If you check his point of view. He has uh, two town halls starting on his first stable. Two mines started to build on the third. Hasn't found the fourth yet, though. But maybe I'm the one who went over overboard with the town halls with only 10 minutes peacetime. Who knows? Who knows? But he is, of course, making the Musketeers, the Netherland Musketeers, and going for the defense upgrade as well as the firepower upgrade, which might not be might be a bit of a waste of money because I do think we play with a Diplo center. So then the round shears should really be the ones who tank the uh, muskets and not... Um, no, the round shears should be the one to tank the melee damage. You shouldn't really, hopefully, have to worry about the physical defense for the musketeers. Let's go over to Brown, who's next in line. He went with the three town halls. Only one barrack, though, so he will have a much smaller army than all the rest of us. But he is going with the high duke. So both of these guys have so far started playing with ranged only. I only found two of his gold mines, though. How many have I found? Okay, I've at least found all of them. But he is still on 10, one iron mine and one coal mine. And the academy up and running has gotten the wood cutting upgrade. And it looks like all of these peasants are working on... Some of them are stone and some of them are wood. So this storehouse, of course, put it below. And also when it comes to wood production, it would be much better to try to get one of those really thick, condensed uh, areas of wood. And then just put a storehouse like right here in the middle of that. And that would be one good way to go. Now he's, waking, uh, now he's working his way up to the second barrack, though, so he can start getting a bit of a stronger military. But it's only 2.30 left of peacetime. Let's go to the last one in their team. That is Fred. And it doesn't look like he is building... He is building a stone wall here. I mean, stone walls, they are very good because they can't be broken by anyone except... Uh, like uh, archers or grenadiers from the Diplo Center or 18th century grenadiers because we play without artillery. But they take a long time to build. So he will not have this one done in 1 minute and 45 seconds, unfortunately, which leaves him very, very open for raids. And that is not a good thing. Although we don't have capture on, we can still kill a lot of his peasants and a lot of his economy. I do find it interesting that he clumped all of his buildings up here in the corner of the base. I don't think I've seen that too many times because the peasants don't spawn over here. So they need to walk a long way to start building them. But I think it looks pretty good. Pretty gosh darn good. He's only found two of his gold mines though. Three? Then why does it only say ten here? Oh, right. Because all of them aren't filled. He has seven mines who are not populated to full capacity. But now the academy is going up. Still only one barrack though. But I think he didn't trade all of his iron at the start. Probably that's the thing. He has a stable up and running though that he's not recruiting from. But I wonder what he's going to get from that one. Only 30 seconds of game time left until the peace time is up. I am working. Oh, I think actually we do play with capture. I guess we're gonna. I guess we're gonna see if we actually play with capture. I don't know if we play with artillery, but maybe not. We might very well play with capture. I'm so not used to doing that for some reason. Uh, but I have also. I will not be able to get my palisade up and running uh, either. But now let's see. Yes, we actually do have capture on. So now I started taking a mine, and if we look at uh, Brown's point of view. This doesn't look too fun, but it's only sick Cossacks from the Diplo Center, which means that they will be very, very weak. But now what I did, I took some of these peasants, and I'm going to start working on a Hungarian civilization, I would guess, if I don't just suicide them. No, I suicided them, and I decided to play with only one civilization. So I destroyed that mine, and now we're moving back up. And this is why... It's so risky to start building a stone wall if you're not absolutely certain that you are going to have it built in time. Because now there was way open for the sick Cossacks, and they are just going to be able to capture peasants, capture mines, and just absolutely wreak havoc 
on Yellow's economy. So stone walls are great, but you need to get them built in time. Otherwise, you are screwed. So now we're just taking all kinds of mines here, and we're going to destroy basically everything. He's making some sick Cossacks of his own. A lot of peasants have stopped working. And also we can see the Mar Commander is working his way here. The pikemen did do a good job of cleaning up those round shears. Of course, round shears are basically only good for tanking damage, not for dealing damage. But they did fill their purpose, and the musketeers were able to clean up. Which is great. Okay, now I'm just destroying everything I captured in Fred's base. Wonder where he's gonna go now. If we go to 5, he doesn't have any more peasants on the map. But I'm killing everything I can here. And we can also see that Mark Commander has made some fast cavalry of his own. He, of course, plays as uh, Hungary, so he can make these Hungarian Hussars already in 17th century. He won't get any stronger ones in 18th century, though. though. But he still has them, and they are still fast, and they can capture stuff. In the meantime, Skew is on his way with another army of pikemen. So none of them seems to have gone for musketeers, although... Um, Mark Commander has this great defensive hill here that would be very, very useful. And also, let's see if... Yes, that actually seems to be closed. Great, it's not here though, but down there it was. But Fred still hasn't given up. And we're just going to be fun to see what Skew is going to go for. I guess he's going to go for Diamas. And how's he looking for Diamas? Point-wise, Fred is all wiped out and Diamas is the stronger one out of the two that's left. But... And uh, Demos is actually stronger than Skew point-wise. But here comes the Pikeman. And Skew managed to catch Brown unawares. And now we can start moving in, taking mines. But are, is he going to have enough Pikemen to clean out all of these Hydukes? A lot of them were caught unawares and they weren't able to shoot in time. And they can't fight in melee, of course. Which means that the Pikemen are now close quarters and the round shears weren't around to tank the damage from the pikemen which means that these guys are going to do a great job at cleaning up the damage dealers aka the high dukes or musketeers and the round shears are not going to be able to deal enough damage i think to deal with these pikemen so brown's base is open and vulnerable in the meantime i come in with my army to attack skew and this is just an absolute onslaught in the city. But now I face the same problem here. I don't have enough uh, melee units to tank the damage from the round shears. But we are managing to keep them at long enough distance for us to shoot them down. But now it's my Piedmont musketeers against the Netherlands musketeers. All spread out. Complete chaos in all the lines. But in the meantime, we are being reinforced from the west by the pikemen of Mar Commander, and this might be the end for the purple player. But now, these round shears, they are trained so quickly, so they are actually able to come up and clean out my musketeers, because with home field advantage, purple is going to keep replenishing his, um, his units, and he's going to do a great job at cleaning that out. Fred is zeroed out. Demas is zeroed out. I think it's just Sever left, actually. This might not be a very long video or a very long battle. But it's always a fun game playing with new members from the, from the Discord community. And try to maybe give them a, a lesson or two. I, don't, I am under no illusion that I'm a good Cossacks 3 player. But I do have some... Um, some things that I've learned from playing with the likes of Chris and Milkman and even Mitch and Josh. That's always fun to uh, to hand over to the uh, to the younger generation of Cossacks 3 players. Sever does have some Dragoons here though. But now he's all seared out and the troops suicided. And I think this is a GG on all fronts. Yes, it is. So that was a fun game. Not a very long video. But I think uh, both Mark Commander and Skew did a great job. They went with the pikemen. And I mean, that works with short peacetime. Because usually you're not able to get enough, um, enough musketeers to deal with it. Unless you also supplement your lines with... We also had artillery as well. But none of us used it. So artillery and capture was on. 
But they did a great job with the pikemen. You could see that they were able to soak up a lot of damage from the musketeers. And they also made short work of the round shears. So they do serve a purpose, even with um, these kinds of games. So that was a lot of fun. And since capture was on, I think it was a, a good choice to go for the pikemen, actually. Now that we know what the result was. Not the best built palisade, though. We do see some vulnerabilities. But, I mean, we all live and we learn. And the important thing is that we're having fun playing it. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any tips or tricks, please write them down in the comments below. Have a great day and take care. I will see you in the next one. Bubble.